Hello and welcome to another video and in this one I'm doing something I haven't done for a while and that's a simple application performance test. I've been using the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24 with the Pro Engine for around a month now so I thought I'd share my experiences and show what key digital art applications are like to use on it. Now I'm not going to get bogged down with specifications and statistics as you can find all that information elsewhere. Instead I want to focus on what's important and that's what it's like to use. When you're spending a lot of money on a setup like this, you need to be confident it will be able to do everything you need. Being primarily a game developer, I will be focusing on my main applications, which are Photoshop, Substance Painter, Marvelous Designer and ZBrush. But first let's dive into Maya. I use Maya every day and when I'm not building rigs, I'm modeling, UVing and animating. So I need it to be quick and responsive. Here we have a scene I created a while ago for a 3D world tutorial, but I thought I'd use this as it's around 7 million polygons for me to throw around. As you can see, moving around the scene is smooth with no lag at all. I can easily continue to work on this with no issues. Let's turn on viewport anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion and see how this affects things. As I expected, this has added a overall kick to the performance and you can see a slight lag now as I rotate around the model. If I turn off ambient occlusion though, things speed back up. Let's try a bit of sculpting. So I'm pressing 3 which is going to enable smooth mesh which will subdivide the model for me. But let's also bake this so we're working with the full polygon count. The sculpt is looking a little angular so I'm going to enable smooth mesh again which will again subdivide the model even more. That's better. Much smoother strokes and bearing in mind I enabled ambient occlusion the scene is nice and responsive to working. As a final test, let's see what animation and rigging is like. Again, I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion to see what happens. Okay, so it's now really slow as you can see. I can hardly navigate around the head, it's like a slideshow. Maybe this is because of the deformers in the scene, I'm not sure but I'm going to disable it again. That's better. Yep, this scene definitely doesn't like ambient occlusion. So let's play around with this rig a little. So it's working well. Now I know this isn't a high resolution model, but we are working with skin clusters, blend shapes, utility nodes and all sorts of other Maya nodes with this facial rig, and it looks like it, I could easily spend time rigging and animating on this device. Animators do tend to animate using a proxy model, 
which is a lower resolution model anyway, so I guess this is a comparable test. So I think I could say that the Xeon Pro engine has no problems when it comes to working in Maya. Yes, the viewport ambient occlusion was a little hit and miss, but I could live without it on specific scenes. The only areas I haven't had time to test yet are with rendering and using Arnold's real-time viewport, but I don't tend to use these regularly anyway, and I wanted this video to be more of a real-world test, just using the apps in the way that I would particularly use them. However, if it's something you want me to look into, please let me know in the comments below. So let's move on and take a look at ZBrush, or ZBrush as it's also pronounced. I know I get a few people commenting on how I pronounce ZBrush as ZBrush. It's probably just a British thing. So here we have a male mesh, which I got from 3D Scan Store. You can follow the link in the description if you'd like to get one for yourself. To be honest, I've used ZBrush on a much less powerful device before and had no issues, so I'm not expecting any here. One area where I normally see slowdown is when you zoom out and pan around the model, but here you can see there's, there are no issues whatsoever. I'm going to load my stock 1 million polygon model now, which I always use for these tests. Again, moving around the model is fine, so let's add a couple of divisions. Seems fine, sculpting is very natural and responsive, and the pressure levels from the Pro Pen are coming through very nicely. I would say I have, would have no problems whatsoever in using ZBrush on this device. On to the next application, and this is one I'm finding that I'm using more and more for generating clothing. What I love about Marvelous Designer is the way you can interact with the cloth and pull it around. This also needs to be quick and responsive to get the best results. At the moment I have this outfit set to a high particle distance of around 20, which is standard when working on a garment and gives you a low resolution model to work with. As you can see, it's nice and responsive and I can quickly adjust the cloth to get the right fit.
Let's lower the distance to 10, which decreases the particle distance, making the model more complex. So we can immediately see a change in how the cloth is reacting when I pull it around. But this is on par with what I would expect when using this particle distance. Okay, let's drop to 5 now, which is usually the level you want when you're ready to export a high resolution model. This will take a while to calculate and I'm expecting it to slow down a lot when I try to pull it around. Yep, quite slow, but I could work with this. To be fair, the usual workflow is to start on a higher particle distance and gradually lower it as you begin to work on finer details. So as far as Marvelous Designer is concerned, again, the Xeon engine handles it no problem. Next on my list is Substance Painter and again I use this application almost every day at the moment for client work. Here I have an engine I created a while ago, but it's a good test model for trying out PBR in Substance Painter.
As you can see, performance-wise there are no issues. Everything is smooth and looks great with the metallic finish, meaning I have a good representation of what it will look like in-game. If I switch to rendering mode using iRay, yes, you see a definite hit in performance, nothing that I wouldn't expect. To be honest though, it's still quite quick. Onto a character now, which has 8K textures and a higher polygon count. Again, I've had no issues when texturing this. The Pro Engine has handled everything well, and I never felt like I was being held back. The only point I noticed a stutter was when I switched texture sets, and it took maybe 30 seconds to move over. But again, that could be because of the texture resolution. If I switch to iRay with this model, you will see it takes a while longer to move over to the renderer compared to the engine. But remember these are 8K textures compared to the 1K ones of the engine, so I would expect a difference in performance. And in IRA, moving around, again, it's slightly slower than when we were working with the engine, but again, we're working with a slightly higher resolution model and higher resolution textures. So this isn't anything I wouldn't have normally expected. So when it comes to Substance Painter, again, another application which works well on the Xeon engine. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you will see that I post more Photoshop work than anything else at the moment. This is due to NDAs, so I can't share the client work I'm doing. But this is also an important application for me to try. I have to say that using Photoshop on the Cintiq Pro 24 is just amazing. The 8000 levels of pressure sensitivity came through well and you can actually tell the difference, meaning I can do lighter strokes and also firmer ones to get the look I want. I also found Photoshop to be very responsive, especially when using touchscreen to pan, rotate and zoom around the canvas. The only issue I did have was with the Express Key Remote's touch ring. When scaling my brush size it would sometimes continue scaling out of control, which got a little frustrating at times. This could just be an issue with my sensitivity settings though, so I need to go back and revisit them. But again, Photoshop worked absolutely fine and I really enjoyed using it on this device. As a final test, I thought I'd try a game. Now as a general rule, I don't have games on my work PC, simply because I don't want the distraction. But in the name of research, I thought I'd download this one. So this is City Skylines, and I'm making sure all the settings are set to full, and I'm running it at maximum resolution.
Now this is just a basic city, but as you can see, I can move around, zoom in and out, and navigate the scene with no lag or texture popping. So for this particular game, I would say it works fine and looks really nice. So I would assume the Xeon engine will handle most games. Maybe I need to try a first person shooter like Doom or Destiny 2, maybe even The Division 2. Let me know in the comments below if this would be useful and I will give them a go. So to summarise, looking back over the past month of using the Cintiq Pro Engine every day, not only for personal work but also client work, could I see myself continuing or do I feel like I need to go back to my trusty Dell? Well I'm happy to say that I didn't experience any issues which held me back. I could happily continue to create both high resolution and more game friendly models and rigs on this device. I've done a lot this month built characters, written scripts, painted portraits, watched some Netflix and played the odd game and the Xeon engine held up well. So would I recommend this setup? Well there's no getting around it, it is expensive, but I also have a small office so switching to this has freed up a lot of space. I also had to invest in some other equipment too, like external storage because you only get a 512GB hard drive with this version of the Pro Engine, but I have been told it's upgradable. I also had to buy a USB-C hub so I could connect my other peripherals. So if you're thinking of buying the full system, make sure you account for these extras in your budget. In terms of productivity, I do feel like my workflow has sped up and there's something nice about having the flexibility of the full system being in one small package. So going back to my earlier question, do I want to keep using the Cintiq Pro or do I feel like I need to go back to my Dell? Well I think it's obvious really, the Cintiq wins out in all areas and to be honest, I love using it. So I think we've come to the end of this video. If you have any questions about this review or the device itself, please leave them below. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with future videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.